the news. Good evening. The Department of Finance says the decision by the European Union to maintain Seychelles on the list of countries that cooperate only partially on tax exchange information is not totally unexpected. The EU has just published the list of countries it sees as uncooperative in tax matters. Seychelles had been given until this month to make the necessary moves to regain its position as compliant or at least largely compliant. For us, it was not a surprise because we're in the discussion with the uh, EU. What we've done so far, um, there are two criteria that the EU are using now. The first one is because of the amendments of the business tax that needs to happen because of our territorial tax system. So we are amending our business tax to ensure that there is an element of economic substance tests in the business tax act. And this is where um, we are in the discussion with EU. And this week, we are in consultation with them based on the latest submission that we have uh, submitted to them for us to discuss a bit and finalize it. And secondly, because we have been downgraded from a largely compliant to a partially compliant, compliant in regards to exchange of information, EU as well is saying that you need to be at least a largely compliant with your exchange information. And these are some of the other reforms that we are doing in regards to the exchange of information. Firstly, is the beneficial ownership, which we have already have uh, a legislation in place. Secondly, it's because of the accounting information. We are ensuring that at least the accounting information are based in Seychelles instead of what currently they are outside, they are keeping outside the, um, of Seychelles. And thirdly, um, one other component is the structure that exists um, at SRC. And currently, um, because in 2015, when they did the assessment, the assessment, we were receiving only four exchange of information from other countries. And currently there's more than 100 cases per year. So this is why we have beef up Social Sovereign Commission. They have a whole international tax unit now, so that at least they are able to promptly, when they become receive information, and they have to send back the information to their related parties. The Anti-Narcotics Bureau says the Supreme Court has ordered that the Financial Crime Investigation Unit, the FCIU, seizes a thumb, sum sorry, of around 260,000 rupees and 330 euros, including money collected from vehicles sold by the FCIU to be forfeited to the government of Seychelles. The sum is related to a case involving four people from Prale, which according to an ANB communique, the FCIU found that the money and vehicles were related to drug trafficking and money laundering. This is only one among 17 cases before the court involving financial and drug-related crimes worth a total of nearly 20 million rupees in cash and other assets. A fire has destroyed parts of a fish processing factory at the industrial estate of Providence. The owner of the business, Mr. James L'Esperance, said he was alerted of the fire early this morning by one of his employees. The factory, which employs 22 people, sells its fish products abroad and on the local market. According to Mr. L'Esperance, all the equipment uh, was turned off as usual when the factory closed yesterday. He also noted that the surveillance camera showed what looked like two people setting fire to the building. The prison authority will begin using a drone to monitor the prison surroundings. The first test was carried out today in the presence of prison officials oh, and the Seychelles Civil Aviation Authority, which regulates the usage of drones. The prison superintendent, Mr. Raymond Saint-Ange, has pointed out that such technology will help enhance the security at the prison. The air traffic manager at the Seychelles Civil Aviation Authority, Mr. Louis Marcien, 
has said that the drone will be operational within the prison parameters, but uh, not for any other air activity. Seychelles is amongst uh, several countries uh, in uh, the region which took part in IOWAVE 20, the Indian Ocean Wave 2020, a tsunami drill aimed at testing warning systems and evacuation procedures in the region. The drill is uh, conducted every two years since the 2004 tsunami. It coincides with the International Disaster Risk Reduction Day, which is today. Under the theme, it's all about governance. Several public and private sector institutions, such as the IOT, PUC, CPEC, and the Eden Island Village Management Association and the Seychelles Maritime Academy, took part in the drill which ran for several hours. It was coordinated by the Department of Risk and Disaster Management, DRDM, and its partners. The scenario for today is we have an earthquake in the region of Andaman, which is near to the India. So there's an earthquake of 9.2 magnitude, and we expect that uh, Seychelles is a threat area. So that is the scenario that we are dealing with. So we are sending to our partners for them to evacuate the area. So we are doing it on the 13, which commemorates Disaster Risk Reduction Day, and also to commemorate uh, Tsunami Awareness Day, which is on the 5th of November. Several fruit trees have been planted at Montan Posé in an area that used to be a forest. The Ministry of Agriculture is working to turn this forest into an agroforestry within the next five years. Several people from the Department of Agriculture, the Unemployment Relief Scheme and Prison Authority have been working to clear a part of the forest and prepare the plants all in preparation to celebrate the Seychelles Food Week. It coincides with the World Food Day, celebrated on the 16th of October. The theme for this year is Grow, Nourish, Sustain Together. Our actions are our future. This agroforestry will extend up to the Montagne Posé prison and will be maintained by the Seychelles Agriculture Agency. The Minister of Agriculture, Charles Bastien, says this agroforestry will contribute towards the production of local fruits and help with the country's food security. It will eventually become a place where people will be able to visit with nature trails. We expect to plant over 10 to 15 hectares of land at Montagne Posé. All will be fruit. It will be all types of, of, of local fruits that's available, be it breadfruit, be it jackfruit, be it uh, um, avocados, and all other guava and all other types of fruits. We hope that uh, we will uh, obtain the assistance of other organizations, be it government or private, to come and give us a helping hand for us to clear that area and plant also as many fruit trees as possible for the country. This is a national project, and this is why we're calling it the National Orchard. And with this, uh, we end this news summary. Thank you for watching and have a very pleasant evening.